Baltimore. Think you've got him? Find out now. Frank Nicotero, welcome to Street Smarts, the show where people try to prove how smart they are by predicting just how stupid others can be. Now, I've scoured the planet seeking ordinary men and women and tested their street smarts by asking basic questions about the world around them. It will be up to our players to gauge the brightness of their bulbs. And speaking of our players, let's meet them. Let's say hi to Sean Bay. And hello, Wendy. Thanks for being here, guys. Now, remember, it's all or nothing on Street Smarts. That means the winner hits pay dirt while the loser leaves dirt poor. Yeah, now let's meet the three people they'll be making snap judgments about. First up, I met Corey in Los Angeles, who had some free advice for all our Street Smarts viewers. Hey, yo, Street Smarts kick it with plenty of hearts. At the charts, I throw darts, hair get apart. This is how we doing it, keeping it live with my man here, Street Smart. That's how we live it, right? Street Smart. What's your favorite movie, Corey? Titanic. Corey, did you cry? I did. I went, to, I went and saw it three times. I cried each time. I'm not going to lie. Now, do you have any words of wisdom for our audience out there? Stay in school and don't do drugs. <laughs> did you live by both of those rules? No. <laughs> Next I spoke to Janet, a well-schooled mixologist with a gift of gab. So, Janet, what do you do here in Denver? Um, I'm a bartender, and I teach at a local university. Oh, what do you teach? I teach um, mediation, conflict negotiation, yeah. like trying to be nicer to each other. Janet, I understand you have the gift to talk someone's ear off. Yes, yes, unfortunately. Okay, talk my ear off. Um, your ear is off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I look huge next to Janet. Finally, I met a Van Gogh protege named James. James, where are you from, and what do you do? Uh, I'm from New York State. I just graduated uh, with a, a, a fine arts degree, and I'm an oil painter here in Denver. Okay, and what, explain the beach here. What's going on there? Uh, this is a Mardi Gras thing. You know, I went, you know, I had a great time. Okay. Life continues at a rapid rate. That's <laughs> All right, it's time for a little game we like to call Who Knew It? All right, we asked the same question to all three people in the field, and your task is to guess who answered the question right. You will lock in your choice, and a correct guess will earn you $100. Okay, guys, start your engines. The first question I ask Corey, Janet, and James is, if a woman is looking for a man who can hang 10, what does she want? So who do you think knew it, Corey, Janet, or James? We're locked in with Janet and James. All right, so uh, Wendy, you're going with James? He's a boy, he's got a fine arts degree. I think he's surfed before. All right, let's it. check it out, see if he can win 100 bucks. If a woman is looking for a man who can hang 10, what does she want? She wants a man at least to be able to make love to her for 10 minutes without having an organ. What about you, can you go at least to 10? Uh, probably. Which, what do you think you usually go? Uh, I'd say about 35, you know, if, unless it's been a long time. That's a wrong answer. I'm sorry, Wendy. James did not know the answer. Sean Bay, we're going to check in with Janet, see if we can get you 100 bucks. If a woman is looking for a man who can hang 10, oh, yeah. what does she want? Surfing. Oh. Person that surfs. Do you like surfers? Um, no, actually, I don't. The correct answer, 100 bucks, Sean Bay. She got it. Guy who surfs. Hang 10, baby. All right, next question was, who was the U.S. Revolutionary War fought against? So who do you guys think knew that? Corey, Janet, or James? Let me know. Okay, we're locked in with James and Janet. Okay, before we check in with those guys, let's see what Corey had to say. Who was the U.S. Revolutionary War fought against? The U.S. Revolutionary, it was fought against Russia. It's fought against Russia, exactly. And who won that war? Uh, the U.S. did. USA, USA. USA. When was that fought? Uh, 1876. Okay. 100 years after we settled. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Corey. All right, Sean Bay, we're gonna see if James can win you 100 bucks. You're going yeah. with him? Yeah, uh, James, he, he's, he feels like, you know, he, he got a degree. All right, let's check it out. Who was the U.S. Revolutionary War fought against? I would say France. It was fighting against France? Yeah. Who won the U.S. Revolutionary War? Uh, I'd say uh, the United States. Beat France. Yeah, I think they did. Oh. James did not know the answer for you, Sean, man. I'm sorry. No, no extra C note for you yet. Let's check in uh, with Wendy's uh, chose Janet. Let's see what Janet says. Who was the U.S. Revolutionary War fought against? Um, Britain. Against Britain? The Revolutionary War? Am I confusing the wars? Britain, 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 Britain. 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 And who won? U.S. 
A. A. A for winning. Way to go, Wendy. 100 bucks for you. Janet knew the answer. Nice job. All right, and the last question of the round is, uh, I asked all three of them, what is a cul-de-sac? Who do you think knew it? Who knew it? Corey, Janet, or James? What is a cul-de-sac? All right, we're both, you're locked in. Both going with Janet. Uh, Wendy, Janet? She's been good so far. I'm sticking with my girl. All right, let's see if we can win each 100 bucks. What is a cul-de-sac? Something that men have. What, like, what do you mean, where? <laughs> like balls. <laughs> it's like having testicles. Right. You both chose Janet. That was an incorrect answer. I'm sorry. No money for each of you. The correct answer, a street or lane closed at one end. A cul-de-sac. I grew up on one. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's recap the scores at the end of round one. Sean Bay, you got 100 bucks. Nice job, Wendy. Also has 100 bucks. Way to go, guys. All right. We just saw who knew it. Next, we'll find out who blew it. All right. If you're driving down I-5, what does the I stand for? Uh, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> what is wasabi? Wasabi. Indian language. Indian language? What do you think it means, wasabi? What's up, B? <laughs> wasabi? What's up? What's up, B? Yeah, okay. What's up, <laughs> Welcome back to Street Smarts. It's time to meet our players. Uh, first up, we have Sean Bay. Sean Bay, I understand you're afraid of vacuums. I, I've, I've gotten over it. Was there a childhood I mean, thing that happened? They, or? Yeah, yeah, I have three older brothers, and uh, they call it the get you. Right. And um, they used to try to suck my toes up with the vacuum. <laughs> all right. It was a trying experience. All right, it's like Jaws and Mr. Mom. OK, all right, Wendy used to live in France. I spent a semester in France. Very nice. Now, can you say something in French? French, France for us. In French? Yeah, baby. Donne moi le d'argent. I want the money. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I thought you said I love Jerry Lewis. Okay. All right. It's time to separate the men from the boys as we enter our next round. Who blew it? All right. This time we asked the same question, only two of our Rhodes Scholars. One answered right and one answered wrong. Now, each time Sean Bay or Wendy correctly identifies which scholar bombed the question, they get $200. Yeah. Now, in this round, guys, you can earn an extra 200 by using the dunce cap sitting in front of you. Here's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear a question you think your opponent can't answer, buzz in and dunce them. If they can't answer the question, you get 200 bucks. But if they answer the question correctly, the money is theirs and you're the dunce. Now remember, you only have five seconds to answer the dunce question and there is only one chance to dunce in the round, okay? Right. Here's the first question I asked both Corey and Janet. I asked them, what product uses the slogan, curiously strong? So who do you think blew it, Corey or Janet? Who blew that one? Okay, we're locked in. Both going with Corey. Wendy, you're going with Corey? Oh yeah, he hasn't gotten one right yet, has he? Okay, I don't know. Let's, let's find out if he gets this one. What product uses the slogan, curiously strong? Uh, isn't like Gynolotrimin? Gynolotrimin, which is used for? <laughs> yeast infection? That is an incorrect answer. Nice job, guys. 200 bucks for each of you. Woo. The correct answer is uh, Altoids. Altoids, curiously strong and you can use it for other things. All right, anyway, uh, here's a question I asked both Janet and James. I asked, according to Newton's law of motion, what do objects in motion tend to do? Who blew it? Who, oh my God, you've been done, Sean Bay. Wendy, put the cap on his head. 200 bucks at stake, Sean Bay, the question to you. According to Newton's law of motion, what do objects in motion tend to do? Uh, flatten out. Flatten out, let me check with the judges. The answer is incorrect. I'm sorry, Sean Bay. Wendy, that's 200 bucks for you, nice job. All right, now the question at hand is, uh, between Janet and James, who do you think blew it? Between Janet and James, who blew that? Okay, you're both locked in. You're going with James. Let's see if he blew it. According to Newton's law of motion, what do objects in motion tend to do? They tend to stay in motion until otherwise interrupted. That's a correct answer. He did not blow it. Sorry, guys. No extra money there. Uh, nice job by James. All right. Here's the last question of the round and who blew it. I asked them, I asked to uh, Corey and James, I asked, according to Andy Warhol, everyone is entitled to 15 minutes of what? Okay, which one of these guys blew it? Is it, uh, oh, okay, we're like, oh. Man, you're locked in, both going with Corey. Okay, possibly 200 bucks for each of you on Corey. Let's see if he blew it. Corey, according to Andy Warhol, everyone is entitled to 15 minutes of what? Fame. There you go, do you believe in that? Do you think that's gonna happen? Everyone's gonna have that one shot? 
Oh man, if they get lucky like me and just yeah. happen to walk down here. <laughs> yeah, they should move. Is there anything right now during that 15 minutes you want to do? Something weird, something crazy? And I will always you. Corey had it right, guys. I'm sorry, you both chose Corey. He did get the answer right. Looks like uh, James is the one who missed it. Let's see what he said. According to Andy Warhol, everyone is entitled to 15 minutes of what? Sex. 15 minutes of sex? That's correct. Are we at a 60s beatnik poetry read? <laughs> Actually not, but uh, I like to have a great time. Okay. And Andy Warhol did too. He said 50, everyone gets 15 minutes of sex. Yeah, it's uh, moderation at a viable pace. I think that's what he was trying to say. A viable pace. <laughs> that's correct. A viable pace, not a medium pace. All right, let's recap the scores. Uh, Wendy, you got 500 bucks. Yeah! Sean, you got 300 bucks. That's looking good. Yeah. Brain power of our scholars, our players will each choose one to lead them to the coveted Street Smarts crowd. Stay tuned. You're doing great. <laughs> Welcome back. Size up the jockeys and place your bets because it's time to pick your pony. This time, Sean Bay and Wendy will each choose one of the three scholars for the entire round and try to guess how they'll answer three questions. Now, a correct prediction is worth $300. <laughs> All right. And to keep it interesting, we're gonna leave the dunce cap in this round, okay? Successful dunce will earn you another 300 smackaroos, and again, you've got five seconds to answer the question, and there's only one dunce in the round. Okay, the player who is trailing chooses first. Sean Bay, that's you. So who would you like to ride? I would like to go with Corey. You're gonna go with Corey? All right, we like Corey and Wendy. Going with the girl. That's You're going with the girl, going with Janet? All right, very good. All right, Sean Bay, the first question I asked to Corey then is, what do you have inside of your cranium? Do you think he got that right or wrong? You're going with, uh, go ahead, say it. Uh, yeah, I'm, he's, I'm going with, with uh, right because he, he did a little rap, so he might know what cranium to use in, <laughs> use, use in his little rap. All right, let's check right. it out. Corey, what do you have inside your cranium? Inside my cranium, uh, a brain. I think I got a, I don't know, I think I got a few screws loose, too. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I can keep it together all the time. That's the right answer. Nice yeah. job, Sean Bay. Nice yeah. strategy. You got it right. 300 bucks. Okay, Wendy, first question I asked to Janet was, where would you find cellulose? Oh, you've been dunced. Sean Bay, throw it on her head there. Throw it on Wendy's head, Wendy. 300 bucks on the line here, one of you will get it. Question to you, Wendy, is where would you find cellulose? Oh, uh, plastic? That is incorrect, I'm sorry, wrong answer, Wendy. 300 yeah. bucks for Sean Bay, nice dunce, nice job, man. Yeah. All right, Wendy, now you can, you can win 300 bucks here if you uh, predict whether Janet got it right or wrong. I'm assuming since I didn't know it, I'm hoping she won't either. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> Where would you find cellulose? All over my legs. What? <laughs> what is it? Um, I don't know. Um, like fat. It's like fat, but it's bad fat. It's actually, it's cellulose is in plants. Oh, you're yeah. thinking of cellulite. Oh. <laughs> Good job, I have cellulose in my legs. There you go. Correct prediction, Wendy. Nice job. She got it wrong. Three hundred bucks for you. Correct answer is in Ooh. plants. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Sean Bay. Next question to Corey was. Where would you find the charity stripe? Do you think you got that right or wrong? I think you got it wrong. You got it wrong? Yeah. I just don't know why, but he's gonna get it wrong. <laughs> okay, let's see what Corey. Where would you find the charity stripe? Charity stripe, uh, that's at the end of the line when you do the uh, Los Angeles Marathon. So when you finish the race, you cross the charity stripe, and then you get the car and the $25,000. Now, have you, did you run the marathon last year? Uh, do I look like I ran the marathon <laughs> last year, any year? What's the furthest distance you've ever ran? Probably like a half a mile, and that was, that was trying to get away from some people that was trying to hurt me. <laughs> you got it wrong, that's yeah. what you said, Sean Bay. Nice shot, 300 bucks for you. You find it on the basketball court. Yeah, it's the free throw, throw line, right? Yeah. Hoops guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Three guys, yeah, all right, okay. All right, next question to Janet, Wendy, was, uh, what does it mean if a woman has a hope chest? Do you think she got that right or wrong? Oh man, this is a tough one. I'm gonna say, Right, because she's a little older and she's Ooh. from the time. Well, not. No. Okay. I mean, I know what a hope chest is. Okay. So I'm hoping she. Hey. What does it mean if a woman has a hope chest? She uh, hasn't had an orgasm yet. Oh. That is an incorrect oh, no. answer. I'm sorry, Wendy. No money for you. 
The correct answer is she has a chest in which uh, linen, clothing, etc., is collected in hopes of getting married, or a dowry, I like to call it. <laughs> okay, all right, Sean Bay, our third question to Corey was, how did the prince wake Sleeping Beauty? Do you think he got that right or wrong? Mm. What do you think? I think he got it right. You got it right? Yeah. He okay. looks like he watched a little bit of cartoons at the house. <laughs> all right, let's see if you got it right. Corey, how did the prince wake Sleeping Beauty? Uh, with a kiss. All right, there you go. You ever wake up a girl with a kiss? No. Why not? <laughs> Morning, bro. <laughs> Wouldn't be good? Wouldn't that definitely wake him up, though? They'd be like, ooh. Nah, they got the morning breath. Yeah. My breath is always sexy. <laughs> you got it right. Nice job, Sean Bay. Way to predict there. You, uh, you're out to a commanding lead here. You got 1,500 bucks. All right, now, Wendy, uh, you have 800 bucks. We can get you another 300 bucks here. Let's do it. Last question of the round. I asked Janet, in slang terms, if a couple is spooning, what are they doing? Do you think she got that right or wrong? She's going to get this one for me. I have one? faith. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> in slang terms, if a couple is spooning, what are they uh -huh. doing? Um, they're, uh, they're, they're lying, well, like silverware. Could, like, could you show me what spooning is? Well, you'd have to turn, okay. like, uh, like Okay, oh, yeah, oh. Uh, okay. Is that, did I get it right? No, hold on, we gotta make sure we get the shot. <laughs> do we have that yet? I don't think we did. We, more? You need more tape? <laughs> this is your favorite yeah. question, I think. For you, we got a great game here. Sean Bay, you got fifteen hundred bucks. Wendy, do it just as well, eleven hundred dollars. Nice job. Now, when we return, Sean Bay and Wendy will be making one last prediction on a question we ask Corey, Janet, and James. They'll each choose one of the street scholars, predict whether they'll get it right or wrong, and make their final wager. Here's the question we asked all three: What's a Rorschach test? So lay off the remote because next up on the shocking conclusion of Street Smarts is. The Wager of Death. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, I hope someone knows CPR because it's time for our final round, The Wager of Death. The crowd is scared. All right, Sean Bay and Wendy, here's the dealio. During the break, each of you secretly chose one of the three people out on the street, secretly made a prediction as to whether they were right or wrong, and secretly wagered an amount of money not to exceed the total you now have. Let's recap the scores. Let's see, Wendy, you have $1,100. Oh, yeah. Sean Bay, you got $1,500. And here's the question we asked Corey, Janet, and James. What's a Rorschach test, okay? All right, Wendy, you're trailing, so let's see who you chose. Corey. You're going with Corey. That's Very right. nice. All right. Sean Bay, who are you going to choose? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with him also. You're going to go with Corey also? All right. Well, nobody picked uh, Jen and James, so we'll say bye to them. See you down the road, guys. All right. Okay. Now it's time uh, for Corey. Uh, Corey's clip. Let's see if he got it right or wrong. What is a Rorschach test? A Rorschach test. Uh, that's, you know, when uh, Shaq go, he gets the rebound, and when he's going for the dunk, and if somebody's under him, Usually that's called like a putback, but that in that case it's called a roar shack test. Because he's like roar. He's like ah oh, boom. Yeah. Slam, but you know shack attack. You know. Yeah. Oh. That is a wrong answer that Corey gave us. He gave us a wrong answer. Wendy, you had Corey. He said wrong. What'd you say? You said he'd get it wrong. Yeah. All right, you have eleven hundred dollars. How much are you gonna add to the eleven hundred? Boom. Yeah. Taking the lead from Sean Bay. Sean Bay, you also had Corey. He got the answer wrong. What did you say he would he would say? Uh oh. You also said wrong. Now, Sean Bay, did you wager enough to overtake Wendy for the title? Now you know. Fourteen hundred dollars. Sean Bay, you just had twenty nine hundred dollars. You are the king of the streets. The correct answer is it's a psychological test, Rorschach test, not to be confused with Horshack test. Anyway, Sean Bay, way to go. You're the king, Wendy. Thanks.